Before 1859, um, you have what's called natural theology as being the the, uh, the chief way that uh, a lot of at least the intellectuals look at the relationship between science and religion, and they look at it as one of harmony, uh, because uh, the conception is, is that God designed nature, created nature, and created it in a way that it's designed that it has purpose. And so, uh, even eminent scientists like John Herschel or, and William Hewell, uh, two of the most important scientists in that period, they are working um, through a natural theology model uh, when they do their work, whether it be in astronomy, which is what Herschel did, and Hewell did everything. Um, but geologists, uh, people like Buckland, are also using the natural theology model. Of course, Darwin disrupts that, uh, not quite <coughs> as much as, as you, you would think, but he does disrupt it. It raises questions about natural theology, and he he is used by a, a group of very aggressive uh, young scientists led by T. H. Huxley and John Tyndall. Um, they they use Darwin's theory to um, get a conversation about how science should be done, um, how professional science should be done, and, and and how it should be done in a secular way that we should be we should have no God talk. Natural theology should be rejected, it should not be used as the basis of, of studying nature. So that's what I find fascinating about the 19th century. It, in a way, it, it's the beginning of our more contemporary secularized view of science. Yeah, the, the Victorian era was influenced in any way by the Enlightenment? Yeah, well, I, obviously, I think the Enlightenment thinkers take the way to some extent because they're very um, critical of Christianity as a religious institution. Um, and the science is something they're very interested in. Um, but I think the 19th century is, is, uh, is different in, in the sense that um, not very many of the Enlightenment thinkers were scientists themselves, and science is in a very different situation. Uh, Newtonianism is the important scientific framework that people were using to look at nature, and Newtonianism depends on natural theology. So um, even Voltaire, who is an Enlightenment figure, um, is a natural theologian. He's just a deistic natural theologian, meaning he he doesn't uh, he's not uh, interested in describing the relationship between God and nature as one where God is actively intervening. Uh, being a deist, he believes that God created nature and then stepped back and let things unfold in and of themselves through natural law. Um, so Voltaire is uh, still a natural theologian, so there's still a kind of religious framework, even on, uh, even some of the philosophers uh, buy into that. Not all, but some of them. Yeah. Natural philosophy and natural history are the two sort of branches of, of what we would consider to be science. Um, those are the two, two terms, the two uh, bodies of knowledge that are often referred to. Um, by um, intellectuals um, and people who we might identify as scientists now, but who were very different from our contemporary scientists. And that's all before the middle of the 19th century. So the same time that Darwin comes along and disrupts natural theology, you also get this disaggregation of natural philosophy and natural history into um, a number of new disciplines. So in other words, the discipline of biology is in is being created during the 19th century. It doesn't exist um, because it's it's considered to be natural history. This is sort of the term that's used in the in the approach to natural history is very heavily founded on, on natural theology. So um, biology is a term that Huxley is basically um, trying to get people to accept because he rejects natural history and its natural theology um, basis. So science, uh, you could almost say that science, the mo modern science as we take it to be, only comes in, into being in the 19th century. Uh, the term scientist is coined by William Hewell uh, in the early 1830s. Um, so even the term um, uh, scientist is not around until um, you know, the early 19th century. Peter Harrison has a wonderful book called The Territories of Science and Religion, where he, he argues that both science and religion uh, are evolving over time, and um, you can't get a conflict between what we think of as science and religion until the 19th century, because it's then when, when you actually get science and religion uh, crystallizing into bodies of, uh, 
of knowledge that can come into conflict with each other. So science as we know it, science as we think of it in our modern terms, really doesn't come into existence until the 19th century. Se você quiser saber mais sobre esse assunto, aqui na descrição a gente vai deixar links e mais informações. E se você gostar desse vídeo, não esquece de curtir, compartilhar, comentar e principalmente se inscreva no canal da TV Noobs para não perder nada de novidade que sair.